So we're going to get to Arch Manning, but first, sorry, Texas, California, and Ohio. The South Florida football recruiting world takes the world over when we're talking about the NFL. I'm going to explain. Look, Yahoo Sports reported at the start of this season, there were more NFL players from Miami than any other city. A close look shows the city of Miami produced 27 NFL players playing today. Houston grew 21. At third place, Fort Lauderdale, a.k.a. Muck City, with 14. And St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Fort Lauderdale has produced the most current NFL players with 13. No other high school has more than seven. Now, Oklahoma, as cornerback in Jaden Davis, who was the best true freshman on Alex Grinch's defense last year, and he went to St. Thomas Aquinas. 2020 cornerback for Oklahoma and signee, Kendall Dennis is from Lakeland, Florida. Hollywood Brown is from Hollywood, Florida. Unanimous NFL MVP Lamar Jackson went to Boynton Beach High, which is just like an hour from Miami. And Deion Sanders famously went to North Fort Myers. Now, when we leave the 305, we'll find Derrick Henry from Uly. We'll find Brian Dawkins from Jacksonville. We'll find Clinton Portis graduated from Gainesville High School. We'll find Max Preps reporting 212 of the 1,696 men on 53-man rosters on the first day of the 2019 season came from the Sunshine State. That's a whopping 12.5%. California was second with 177 players. That's 10.4%. And the national state of Texas counted 173 at 10.2%. Now, matter of fact, South Florida's just this good. If you put together a team of South Florida-bred players, you could probably beat the Miami Dolphins. South Florida elite, which is what I would call them, would be composed of Lamar Jackson, Teddy Bridgewater, Devontae Freeman, Frank Gore, Dalvin Cook, James White, Marquise Brown, Antonio Brown, T.Y. Hilton, Geno Atkins, Amari Cooper, Joey, and Nick Bosa, Levante David, Patrick Peterson, and Xavier Rhodes. Not to mention all-time greats like Michael Irvin, Andre Johnson, Chad Johnson, Devin Hester, and yes, primetime. But if you just recruited Florida and you were just allowed to recruit three counties, You'd pick Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach because, like Neil McCauley, they stay with the heat. And former St. Thomas Aquinas head coach George Smith isn't shy about saying it. In 28 years, he won three state titles and put together a record of 279-61, and 61, which is pretty damn good. Michigan and Ohio State figured out South Florida was where you could get enough talent to knock these snowbirds smooth out like Craig hit Debo with the brick, and Howard Schnellenberger packed the pipe, roped it off, and then turned the posh private Holland Hall version of a college into a dynastic destroyer of worlds. Ask your favorite baby boom and Generation X Sooner fan, and they'll tell you how Jimmy Johnson and Sebastian was about that action. But how is it the retirement capital of the world and the jumping off point for the greatest Elmore Leonard character in history, Raylan Givens? Keep up, Kent Folk became an incubator for NFL talent. Forget the heat. It's hot in New Mexico. They ain't got any. Forget the humidity. It's sopping wet in Louisiana. They still produce more. Think about competition. A quick glance, again, at Max Preps and its final top 25 poll for 2019 shows four top 25 programs and a deep look at where NFL players played prep ball, 40 high schools who count at least one current NFL player as an alumnus. You'll see all in Florida. Then add to that, most of these cats are pieces of iron sharpening each other since Pee Wee, and it's easy to see why recruiting Florida can lead you to the promised man, promised land, truly. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> so this is a ditty about Arch Manning, the Max Preps National Freshman of the Year, whose given name is Archie Manning. No, not that Archie Manning, as I said. That dude's like 70, which basically makes him older than Methuselah in football years. No, this Archie Manning goes by Arch, but you're dead on with your assumption that he is indeed a Manning. In fact, that's Peyton and Eli's nephew and Cooper's kiddo. He's class of 2023 and already doing T.I. big things and making young M.A. big moves in the Big Easy. At Isidore Newman, young Arch is big time and put together one heck of a season. He passed for 
2,407 yards with 40 total touchdowns while leading the Greenies to a 9-2 record in 2019. And while he hasn't said he's received any offers yet, you know they're coming because reigning national champion and LSU head coach Ed Orgeron stopped by Newman this January. And I'm willing to bet he did more than ask, how's Veronica? I expect Dabo Sweeney, Lincoln Riley, and Nick Saban will come through too. But Lane Kiffin better be making weekly trips to New Orleans because Young Arch is the real deal and a legacy. In his first high school start ever, he completed 24 of 34 passes for 224 yards with three touchdowns. In week three of last season, he passed for 289 yards with five touchdowns. But it's being National Freshman of the Year that's going to pop on his resume more than almost anything else he's done or might do in high school because of the company he now keeps. It ain't the Heisman, but doggone if it ain't a great predictor of future college football success. Dylan Moses, yeah, Alabama's Dylan Moses, won the National Freshman of the Year. So did Trevor Lawrence. So did Nick Bosa, who just played in a Super Bowl. Jabril Peppers, and yes, to the chagrin of many OU fans, Jace McClellan. And at six foot one, he's still growing. Circling back to his grandfather, Archie I, he gave this quote about the maturation of his grandson compared to that of his two Super Bowl winning sons, who you know also were quarterbacks. He's probably a little ahead of them. Archie had himself a no, you know the word, Sherlock moment there. As in, yes, he's two years ahead of them because they didn't crack varsity until they were juniors in high school. Young Arch did that as a true freshman at quarterback. That puts Young Arch, yes, again, two years ahead, but also he's twice as agile as his uncles. You'd have to be in this day and age of high school football. It tells you a lot about how Cooper was a great athlete and probably the best athlete of any of Archie's kiddos. Story goes, Cooper was a wideout, but a promising reserve quarterback for the Greenies until his junior year when he helped persuade their head coach to replace their antiquated wing T offense with a more pass-oriented attack, featuring Cooper himself as the top wide receiver. His most extensive duty at quarterback came late in his sophomore season. Against Redeemer, Cooper replaced the injured starter and his injured backup and threw a 99-yard touchdown pass. But it wasn't until, you know, you know further down the line that you figured out he wasn't going to be playing much quarterback because that was his only completion of 14 attempts. Later, in a game against Bell Chase, he threw five interceptions. Archie said he waited up for Coopy, Cooper Koopa, to come home that night because he thought his eldest might need some consoling. Archie said he can still remember games when he had five interceptions at least three times in his career. Yikes. And yes, he said, I wanted to jump off a bridge afterward. So when Coop came in the door, Archie was ready. He said, you didn't beat me. I threw six against Tennessee in Knoxville in one afternoon. Cooper looked at his dad, steely-eyed, and said, well, they weren't my fault, dad. I'm a receiver anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, that's as tough as they come. Bottle that self-confidence and pure ability to play the game, and you'll see that's Cooper's boy running around like destiny fulfilled. Not a moment too soon, as his uncle Eli is retired at 39, and a third generation of Manning quarterback is exactly what we need. Maybe, maybe not, but it's not as if Arch doesn't have big shoes to fill. We know about the Mannings. In fact, one of his uncles beat the Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, greatest dynasty of all time, New England Patriots, in the Super Bowl twice and is on the list that includes just Terry Bradshaw, Bart Starr, Joe Montana, and Brady and himself is the only players to win the Super Bowl MVP twice. That same uncle also started over 200 consecutive games in the NFL and is among the top 10 all-time passers in touchdowns. The other uncle's Peyton Manning. <laughs> and while no one believes that Peyton shouldn't be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, he's also one of the people you would expect someone else to be more excited about is having played in four Super Bowls and, yeah, being on the winning side of two of them for two different franchises. But he is not his biggest fan. He is his brother's biggest fan. His favorite Super Bowl memory? Watching his little brother Eli take the Giants down the field in a two-minute drill to beat the undefeated New England Patriots in 2007. Folks, remember the catch that David Ty Davis Tyree had against David Tyree. 
had against his helmet. Folks forget if Eli doesn't complete that pass to Plexico Burris, it's a Metallica song and nothing else matters. What I'm saying is young Arch Manning's career is just beginning and defensive coordinators better sleep with one eye open, gripping their pillow tight. All right, that's it for me. Doses.